and welcome to Drawing with Paolo. As you can see, today it's snowing, and it's snowing a lot. So after a morning of shoveling, it's a great time to go inside, do another drawing with a hot cup of cocoa. Let's go inside and see what we can do together. All right, so here we are once again, uh, drawing with my iPad Pro and my Apple Pencil. What I am doing now, you can do on a piece of paper, just like I'm doing on my iPad. There is no difference. So as you can see, I've decided to draw, start drawing the head of this character called Deadpool. And I've decided to draw Deadpool because many people have been asking me, can you please draw Deadpool? And it's been a while, a while coming and uh, you know, the movie from last year and so on. So I think this time around is we're gonna draw us a little bit of Deadpool. So of course his eyes here, those almond shapes on either side. And we're gonna draw in his little nostrils here, his nose. Of course he's wearing a mask, so the nose shouldn't be too apparent and the bumps to his ears on either side. And what's great about my Apple Pencil is I can go ahead and erase the lines that I don't want anymore, uh, and I don't have to change tools. Whereas you at home, you may have to change tool once in a while, and that's okay. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to, and as you pause the video, you can catch up, grab your tools, erase these lines that I've erased, and come on back. So now we're gonna go in and draw his mask lines. He's got these two black lines around his eyes. Well, black patches, I should say, not lines. And then uh, draw all the way around here in these uh, straight lines, more or less, and pull this line all the way back down here like that. And there we go, we've got the foundation of this. What's cool about my iPad is I can zoom in. Now, on a piece of paper, you wouldn't do that. Uh, you don't need to. Uh, in my case, I really wanna get more detail in these things. And uh, for you at home, you can at least see uh, a lot better how I'm drawing. And there's a great advantage to that as well for these videos. Okay, so the next step, I'm going to go in and clean up this head a little bit. Make sure uh, the lines are all nice and clean. And then we're going to start working on the body. What I want my uh, character to be doing today is holding a weapon in this hand towards us. He'll be holding his, his um, I think it's a Desert Eagle 45 millimeter. It'll be pointed towards us, more or less. And in his other hand, he'll have a sword, his uh, samurai sword. Uh, on which he's leaning his gun. So this is his first hand over here with his thumb under this section like this. And I really want the, the idea of perspective, which means that his hands will be closer to us and his face, body will be farther. So we really want those hands to look like they're popping out of the page a little bit. So I'm gonna clean up these lines here, get rid of some of these, these elements that we don't need anymore. Those foundation lines have helped us position where the hand's going to be. And now we can add more detail such as the forearm back here and then the bicep probably see that a little bit and then his other shoulder will come about over here kind of like that so i like to put uh basic shapes to represent where my shapes will be where my uh, body parts will be such as this hand over here starts out as a sort of uh circular square if you can call it that the corners are rounded and then i put details in to make them look like fingers such as the knuckles at the top and the finger and the thumb at the bottom here just like that and then of course I'll add in more shape here to my character so there's a cowl line here so his mask ends here on his neck nice neckline like this and then uh, little stitchy lines for his mask at the top like that you might see them a little bit better like this and they go all the way down so He's made his mask there out of three or four pieces. And then we're gonna color all this in. Now once again, what you can do at home is pause this video and color in these portions with a nice flat, regular gray. And then once you've caught up, you can hit play again. And here we go, I'm gonna redefine the contour lines of these black pieces to his helmet or to his mask. Retracing them, to solidify them, make sure they're where I want them to be, and then retrace his eyes as well. One line here, another line under here, nice curves. One line, one eye is a little bit bigger than another, but that's fine, you know, that's all Deadpool. He's a little kooky and has those uh, expressions and all that, so we'll have that function for us. And we'll put a little bit of reflection here at the bottom of his eye. I'll erase the interior lines here that we don't need. Now, what will be helpful for you at home if you're using pen and paper or pencil and paper is to have one of those really thin erasers which will allow us to clear up uh, fine details in the drawing. And those erasers kind of look like pencils, but they're essentially just a really long uh, white eraser. 
If you have questions pertaining to the tools I used to use on paper and pencil, there is a video on my YouTube channel that shows you all about the tools I, I use, um, which do not include the iPad and Apple Pencil. It's a little bit older video, but the tools still apply. Now I'm putting in some shading here for his eyebrows. So the eyebrows produce a shadow underneath his eyes. So we're going to shade this in, sort of like zigzagging more or less. Nothing too complicated so far, I don't think. Of course, if this is one of your first videos that you're watching, one of my first videos, um, I recommend you go see some maybe easier videos. If this is the first time you're attempting a drawing, hey, if you want to go for it, please do. I'm not stopping you. Try it out. Follow along if you can. Um, but of course, there are much simpler videos that exist on my channel, such as, you know, the uh, banana and apple or a pumpkin or the, the uh, dagger. Those are easier to draw. Okay, so this is... Um, just like a belt uh, that I guess is the, the the element that supports his uh, samurai swords. And I think his shoulder here is way too far out. So I'm going to bring that in a little bit closer. So I'll erase these lines out and then put his shoulder about here. That'll make more sense closer to his, uh, his body. And then here's his uh, forearm. And we'll put his little elbow in there at the bottom here. And of course, we can now add a bit more detailing, erase this stuff out of here. We don't need these extra lines anymore. Now, I've had some people say, you know, why do you draw with the iPad? Why aren't you drawing on paper anymore? Um, I don't technically see a difference other than, other than me zooming in and zooming out. I think that you can do these things on paper nonetheless. The idea is to see how I draw the lines and you reproduce them on paper, right? So, um, I apologize to those who think that this is um, not cool, that you'd rather see me do it on paper, but, um, you know, I think it's a it's doable, what I'm doing here on paper. It's the, it's the same technique. There's no difference. The only difference is I use one tool to replace, like, three or four. All right, so this is that belt element here. Uh, there's a line that goes all the way to the bottom over here, all the way down to the left. So that's his belt. It's made of leather, attaches to the thicker part here at the top. And, of course, we'll erase that uh, pec muscle line there. We don't need, can't see through the belt. And then we'll erase our foundation lines here to the arm. And we'll keep only the outline here of the forearm, of course. And now we'll trace in the pec muscles. So they're kind of squeezed, right? He's got his, his left arm up, so that squeezes his muscles. We have to kind of think of the shape of those muscles as they move. And then a few of these stitch lines to his uh, clothing, to his suit. Just like this in a shoulder shape like that. And then a few folds to his mask. And then the thickness to his pecs. So his pectoral muscles have a thickness to them, so those will be shaded later on. And then we can add a few more uh, clothing details here kind of stitch lines to his clothing. I have a lot of people asking me, um, hey Paolo, why is it that you're not making videos as often as you used to? Um, and I think in a few weeks what I'll do is I'll show you my whole video making process. Um, first it starts with research. So, you know, I need, if, if I choose to draw something and I'm going to research it, I'll either watch a movie about it or if, anyway, a few scenes. Or I'll go on the internet and research a few elements such as, you know, gloves and masks and uh, what the suit looks like and all that. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll collect a whole bunch of images and pictures that I'll use while I draw. Now, that's not to mean that I'll redraw the exact uh, uh, reproduction of what I see in front of me. What I'll do is I'll use the details and then draw my own drawing such as this image of Deadpool. I don't think there'll be something similar that you'll be able to find. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. The idea is I'll, I'll collect a whole bunch of images through the web, and then I'll use those as I draw as reference points. And then after I'll draw it. So drawing it, drawing my picture here isn't very long. I would say maybe a, an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, but then the long part begins. So the long part is I need to edit this video. I need to take the long parts out because sometimes I'm either watching TV while I draw or I'm listening to music and, and uh, or my kids are, are around. And I need to take the, the long parts out, make sure that it looks like I'm drawing in one complete motion. And that takes a lot of time. It takes more time to edit the video than it 
it takes to actually shoot the video. Once I've edited the content out, then I'll do the voiceover. Because there are things happening around me, I can't actually talk and draw at the same time or else you'd hear a bunch of things um, that aren't really cool in the, the drawing video. And at the same time, when I fast forward parts, then I wouldn't be able to fast forward my voice at the same time. Otherwise, it would sound all kinds of weird, right? Um, so what I want to do is record on top. And I record in two languages. So I record in English and I also record in French. These allow me to have a bigger fan base because, of course, I have both French and English people watching me on YouTube. Once those are made, so I have two videos at this point, I upload them, and uploading takes some time, although I have a good uh, internet connection today, and it takes a, somewhat of an hour, maybe a little, a little more, a little less, depending on the, the duration, and I do that twice. So I would say that making one of these is a better part of two or three days. And I, you know, I have a, a full-time job, which means that I can't be drawing every day, and I don't make any money off of my drawings on YouTube. So it's really all pro bono. I'm giving this stuff away just so that you guys can learn to draw. Um, and so that's why it takes a bit longer for me to create these videos than it used to. I used to make shorter videos. Now I'm making the longer videos with more detail in them. So they take, they take a lot of time. But I hope you enjoy them. I hope you still uh, are following along and are liking my videos as I draw. And if you do like them, hey, leave a liking comment and a like my video. And please subscribe if you haven't already. You'll see there's a whole bunch of stuff on my YouTube channel. So here we're drawing the detail to his fingers and notice that I'm not drawing straight lines. The lines must follow the curvature of the finger. Your fingers are like sausages, so they're rounded. And if I were to draw straight lines like we do when we're, when we're ch children, it doesn't look like the fingers have volume. They don't look like they're round. And so in this case, I need to curve these lines so that they give volume to my fingers. Well, not my fingers, but Deadpool's fingers, you understand. Then we'll add a thickness to these lines. And because you've seen me do, you know, three of these, I'm going to fast forward the rest. Once again, hit the pause button and uh, catch up. Not a problem. You can re-watch these things over and over again if you like. Um, as long as you don't mind paying for the internet. That's all it really costs to uh, draw with me is your internet and perhaps, you know, pencil and paper. And you can use any tool you have around the house. Any kind of paper doesn't really matter. Use a uh, line paper, yellow paper, white paper, uh, recycled paper. Doesn't That really doesn't matter. And by the way, while we're talking about material, this is my new ring, DWP ring. So drawing with Paolo. It was made by one of my good friends, uh, family members, actually. Uh, and it's beautiful. I designed it, I drew it up, and then gave it to those guys, and they uh, produced it for me. And so now when I draw once in a while, you'll be able to see that ring. It'll maybe be on my thumb. Um, and so the, the, the point here is so that you know that it is really DWP drawing this image. Uh, and here are the people that have made it. The company's called Imagine 3D. And uh, I'll show you the flip side of the card. So you can always contact Ariane La Liberté. And the information here is à la liberté at imagine3d.ca if you want to contact them, have a ring made for yourself, or if you, maybe you'd like to buy a, a DWP ring, feel free. I'm not making any profits off that stuff. It's really just uh, if you're interested in having the content for yourself or making your own ring or seeing what Imagine 3D can build for you. And the whole purpose to the ring is that um, I've noticed my videos ending up on other web pages or other websites and those people are saying that they are their videos. So my DWP logo will be not only at the beginning of the end that you can crop out, but will appear from time to time within the video itself, thanks to my, uh, my new ring. So, all right, let's put in some shading here to our fingers. I want to keep a little bit of a reflection there in the middle. And so I'll keep this uh, really dark on the close to the fingers, where the two fingers connect, but I'll keep it light in the middle. So it looks like there's a nice light reflection there. Nice light reflection. Hard to say fast three times. Nice light reflection, nice light reflection, nice light reflection. Yeah, reflection. See, it didn't work. I'll erase these uh, foundation lines. <laughs> and uh, get rid of these elements here that we don't need anymore. Just like that. And see, the, the ease of use of the iPad is crazy in the Apple Pencil. I could just flip-flop between uh, tools here and it makes drawing a blast. And you know, if you've been following me for some time, I've been saying that I'm quite lazy when it comes to drawing, taking out my tools, setting up and all that. Um, you, you can't tell at the moment, but I'm just uh, drawing on my sofa. I've got an easy chair in the living room and I'm just drawing out of my easy chair with the iPad on my, on my legs. 
So it's it's a super fast setup. And for a lazy guy, as far as creation wise is concerned, uh, not the creation process, I guess it's just getting out the tools, cleaning up and putting tools away. Having an iPad and an Apple Pencil is amazing. It takes uh, fewer steps to get creative really quickly. So you can start being creative really quickly and then you can stop really quickly as well, put everything away and it takes a uh, two seconds. All right, so this top portion of his glove is dark. Well, darker than the fingers, and as far as I see it anyway. His fingers, I would like to have them more rubbery, more rubberized, I guess. This portion here is nice and black, or darker anyway. And uh, let's not forget the thumb under here. I need to draw that too. Now this one, remember that the, the light can't hit the thumb too much. So we'll put some details in here, but then we'll color it much darker than the rest of the fingers. And the way the thumb is you know, facing us, then the lines are curved at certain areas and are straight in other portions of it. And then we'll color this in like nice and dark here by the hilt of the sword. And then we'll put in some shading here. Um, but must be darker here by the side of the fingers. Look at that. There we go. That's coming out pretty well. Okay, so let's add a few more details here to the underside of the of the thumb. We'll thicken these lines here. I like to make the underside of the lines thicker. It gives it a bit more uh, of a, I guess a, it's a cool effect. It demonstrates shading at the bottom. And the lines at the top where the light hits are lighter. Um, so the underlines, very dark, and the top lines are, are lighter. Even between the fingers here, they should be uh, a bit darker. Just like this. And then of course the sword needs to come up to his fingers here. And the under portion of the sword needs to be dark as well. Okay, now we can color the underside of the sword, give it a darker zigzag here, as the, the light cannot reach the underside of the sword uh, handle. And the hand is making somewhat of a shading effect. Yeah, see, so as I zoom in and out, I'm actually taking a look at what the drawing looks like uh, from afar. And you can do that physically by moving your head back or moving your head back away from your picture. You'll get a better understanding of what you see. On the iPad, I'll zoom in and zoom out. And the samurai swords are wrapped, or the hilts anyway, are, are uh, the handles are, are wrapped in a specific pattern where it creates these um, diamond shapes. So I'm going to erase these diamond shapes out of my picture. Um, I understand that for you at home, that'll be a bit more difficult, but if you have, as I mentioned earlier, that thin um, eraser, then you can do these. Uh, what I recommend if you don't have a thin eraser is color these really black. Make these black diamonds uh, instead of the white ones. And that'll make sense. I want to keep your drawing as easy as possible to do as well. So I'm going to just now draw these leather wrap, um, these leather material here that create these uh, diamond shapes are pretty much just leather wrapped around the handle. So you can see these leather bits coming around here, wrapping all the way up here like that. And you can, you don't want to draw through the diamonds. If yours are black, then hey, it doesn't really matter. You, you won't be able to see these lines through there. A few more over here. Just like that. And then we'll probably want to draw the thickness to those uh, leatherette strips. So I'll just add these little uh, horizontal lines here, which will give it the effect of a thickness to the wrapping. And I'll put a few more dark ones here. There we go, just like this. And all the way to the end. Yeah, look at that, look at that. Coming along well. Very good. All right, so we're gonna add a few more detail lines, some cross hatching. Give it a bit more shaded effect. And then it looks good. So now we're gonna draw the sword. And what you can do at home is just draw with a, you know, a swoosh of your pencil. Or you can pull out your ruler and make a nice straight line, which what's cool with the iPad 
here in my pencil is that all I need to do is pause for a second and the line straightens out and then I can position it the way I like. Um, at home, you could, you know, I, I used to do those straight lines with my uh, manually, just by hand. Uh, but if you have a tools at home, such as a ruler, you can go ahead and use that, make a nice straight line, but it doesn't really matter. We're not looking for perfection here. We're just looking to have fun and be creative and draw stuff. Stay away from those maybe uh, video games for a little bit and uh, practice our creativity. Don't forget the thumb under here for the uh, left hand. It needs to have a thumb. Well, you know, if it's a Deadpool, he might not have a thumb for a time, but it'd grow back, right? <laughs> we, we all know how Deadpool reacts. Um, and then I'm going to draw this thickness around his uh, black, the black portions of his mask. It'll look like it's, uh, it's been stitched, of course, to the red portion of his mask. And a bit more detail like that. And here too. All the way around. And I'm going to color this in darker. I want to look like... I want it to look like there's a shadow here at the bottom and of course under his eyebrows as well, make that a little bit darker. So as I move along in the drawing, I decide to maybe change things or add things. And that's okay, you can do that throughout the time that you're drawing. Uh, what we're doing is we're adding layers of, uh, of in this case, pixels. <laughs> and if you're doing it in real life on paper, then you're just adding more uh, lead to your paper. Uh, it's not lead anymore, it's graphite, but you know, I'm older. So we used to call it lead, your lead pencil. But so what we're doing is we're adding layers of, of uh, graphite on top of other graphite as we're drawing. And we can make uh, these line drawings or these shaded patterns much darker just by adding, la adding layer on top of layer. I'll reposition my legs here. My legs are crossed underneath my iPad and I tend to cut circulation off to my legs. Bad idea. You want to be able to walk away when you're done. Walk away! and not just fall flat on your face because you can't feel your legs anymore. So I'm going to uh, reduce the size of my eraser here and erase those foundation lines inside there. Don't need those. And make these lines a little bit darker all the way there. And I think I'm going to, I need to balance out the head uh, after I draw these stitch lines here, which will give a bit more rea uh, realism to my drawing. I'm going to readjust this right side, which doesn't seem right. So retrace the outside headline. And, and now this stitch line looks a bit better, but I'll move it a little bit more to the right. So it ends up being uh, a bit more equal to the left side. And then we'll erase these foundation lines that we don't need anymore. Remember, if you're drawing on paper, you want to draw as lightly as possible when you're putting in your foundation lines. When you're drawing your basic shapes, Go very light, and then when you draw, uh, if you want to solidify your lines, then you can draw a lot darker. And that way, those lines are, are going to be a lot easier to erase. If you press really hard on your pencil uh, while doing these foundation lines at first, it'll be very difficult to erase and, and it'll make your drawing look a little bit dirty. Uh, but then again, it is your drawing, so you do what you want with it. I'm just giving you a few tool tips on how to figure this out. All right, the next step is we're gonna add a bit of shading here on the left side of his head. We'll imagine that the light is coming from the top right. And this end here is all nice and dark. All the way up, just like that. And it also has to go through that stitch, but we're gonna keep the stitch line bright white and color in just a little bit of a, uh, I would say, a, uh, not an oval uh, shading, but somewhat of a circular shading. Imagine that the head is kind of like a sphere, right? So we need to shade this head as if it looks like a, a sphere shape. And consider uh, going back to my YouTube channel and finding how we shade a sphere. And people will say, why did you draw a sphere? It's just a sphere. Well, you'll use the, the same techniques of a sphere in drawing heads, biceps, you know, uh, hands and so on. So it's a great technique to learn how to draw shading on a sphere. And here we'll add some shading to those pleats or folds in his mask, which will represent a shadow coming down from his nose. Might add a little bit of a nostril here. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I, looks, I like that. It's a good look. So we'll zoom in a little bit and then work on this uh, stitching on this right side. There you go. And then, then we'll add a bit more uh, lead over here, or more graphite rather. Uh, make this nice and dark. This is a black line. This is the end of his mask. It's nice and black in there. 
and go all the way to the right. Now, as we're moving to the right, we can leave that a bit brighter. So closer to the chin, it's nice and dark. And I think I'm going to darken these patches here too. I don't think uh, they should be that bright. So I'm going to try to darken, darken them down a little bit. Color this stuff in. Much darker than what they looked like before. Yeah, that's coming along. I hope your drawing is coming along well as well. Uh, I'm going to make the shading underneath the eyebrows now darker because, you know, I need to, I need those to be as dark as the triangle at the bottom of the mask is. And color all the way up. Might want to leave a little bit of a white reflection there at the top. But it's up to you. This is your drawing as well, so you can make modifications to it. If there are things that I'm doing that you don't like, well, change them. Change them on your drawing. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. If you like what I'm doing, then do exactly the same thing. That's the whole point, is to get you to draw a lot of different things so that eventually any character, this Deadpool character, you can transform into Batman if you want, transform into Daredevil if you want, or Aquaman. It doesn't really matter. The whole point is understanding body positioning and body shapes. In the end, the costume is just the costume. You can draw any costume on any body shape. That doesn't really matter. All right, so we'll put this uh, belt pad here, draw that in, erase these lines around there. And then, oops, I need to trace that rather than erase. There we go. That's one thing, and, and if I'm using real tools, I can't make a mistake between my pencil and my eraser, which, which I can do here on the iPad. A little check here like that, all the way down, diagonal, straight, diagonal, and then we'll mirror the shapes on the other side, check all the way up, curve, and we're going to color that in. This section here, nice and dark, all the way down, so we'll fast forward that. Notice how my voice isn't changing on top of this fast forwarding piece. Well, that's because I'm recording on top of it. Ta-da! A little bit of magic for you. It's editing magic. And then we're going to color cross this whole belt um, portion here with a relatively uh, neutral gray. But at the bottom here, we'll create a gradient effect. So we'll make it nice and black. Well, not black, perhaps uh, a nice gray, maybe gunmetal, <laughs> not black. Let me trace these, make these a little bit thicker like that. And then a stitch line all the way down. this. Same thing on the right side, all the way down. Now you thought I was going to follow that check line, huh? But nope. Go all the way down. And then this is where we are going to create that gradient from bottom to top. So the bottom portion here is darker. And as we work our way to the top, we'll make it lighter. So it gives us a shaded look. Just like that. While I draw this, I want to tell you about uh, something important, I would say. My son, Noah, is now calling himself Noah X Pro, and he has his own YouTube channel. And his YouTube, YouTube channel is all about um, video games. So he films himself playing video games and laughs and does a whole, whole bunch of cool stuff. Uh, if you'd like to follow him, go look for Noah X Pro uh, on YouTube. And um, I guess I can show you, I could show you his, uh, his logo. Uh, oh, by the way, this is the belt buckle. So we're gonna just draw this in with a, a few rectangles, just like that. And remember to keep this portion here needs to be disconnected, right? We can't make a square in there because the belt passes through that buckle. And we're gonna color all this stuff nice and black. Change my leg position here again, and then color all that in. So here's uh, Noah X Pro's uh, logo. This is what you should look for. I think there are two X Pros online, but this is Noah X Pro, my son. And he'd be flattered. He'd love for you guys to go and give him a few follows, subscribe to his channel. He likes to play uh, Minecraft and other video games. Uh, and he likes to play around with that stuff. And uh, he hopes to ha have a few fans as well. By the way, I'd like to thank all of you following me. I'm up to 66,000 people now following me. Thank you for sharing my videos with your friends and family members. Thank you for sharing your, my videos with your uh, schools. 
I have a few teachers now following me as well, and they're sharing my drawings with their students. And that's, that's the point. I find that arts in school today is lacking a little bit, uh, as far as where I come from anyway, in Montreal, Quebec. Um, teachers are now responsible for teaching all kinds of um, matters and, and teaching all kinds of subjects, I should say. And the problem is, well, not everyone is an expert in everything. And I find that art is suffering a little bit from that. So uh, what teachers are doing now is playing my YouTube videos in class. And why not? It's really cool. So hi, everybody in the classroom. Nice to see you. I have visited a few of you and um, it was a blast. And I hope to do that again sometime soon in April. Um, but there you have it. So uh, anyway, check out NoX Pro. Thanks for sharing my drawings and making me uh, your favorite artist to draw with. Now this little bump here in his helmet or his mask is really, it seems that he's given himself too much material to his mask. So we can barely see that one as it's going towards the back. But I put it in there because it's a mainstay to Deadpool here. And I'm going to retrace his jawline here, make this nice and black so that it stands out from the rest of his body. Just like this. Now, once again, you know, this is my drawing, yes, but the one you're doing, you can draw it the way you want to and modify some things. And if you'd like to make someone else in Deadpool be my guest to do it, you can use my Deadpool foundation, the position of the Deadpool, and draw somebody else. That's quite okay. So this shading here to his trapezius muscle, that's the muscle that connects your shoulder to your neck and would allow uh, your shoulders to go up and down. When you go like, I don't know, I don't know, that muscle that pulls on the shoulders is called the trape trapezius muscle. And over here underneath the jawline, we need to make it nice and dark and to where your clavicles uh, meet at the middle of your chest. And then we have this stitch line, three lines here going all the way down from the top of the chest line here, or the bottom of the chest line rather, I should say. And and let's let's finish this here, this forearm. Make a nice dark line around there. And please do rotate your paper at home or at school. Make sure that you're comfortable with your hand is in a proper position uh, to make those nice curved lines. It is very difficult to keep the paper straight and keep drawing in a comfortable position with your hand. So please rotate that paper. Feel free in rotating it, just like I'm doing here. So you can better control your lines and make really, really cool drawings. I'm gonna clean up this drawing a little bit, zoom it a little bit more, and then we're gonna color all of this shoulder pad here in a nice black. Now we'll start with the first layer, and that layer will be you know, not too dark, I guess. Um, if you wanna take the time to color that in nice and dark, the first try, you can do that. I like to put layers on top of layers, so I can control the lighting effects by going over it a second time like I'm doing right now. And so this portion here will be very dark because it's the head is creating a shadow on that there. And then I want this shoulder uh, to look rounded. Once again, we'll use that uh, cylinder or sphere shading technique. So very dark at the far left and brighter as we move over to the right. I'm gonna make this portion here a little bit darker too and work my way up and make it lighter as I move up. So that's where the light hits the shoulder pad there. And of course, this section here needs to be much darker. I'm gonna color that in nice and black so that the head is creating a shaded effect. And then I think I'll add like a sort of reflection element here. So this is kind of a shiny-ish material, shinier material. So I'll add this black line to go around the shoulder line, which gives it a nice effect of uh, reflection, I guess. All right, look at that, it's coming along. Readjust all this here so I can make this a little bit darker still. So as I move back away from my drawing, I get a better understanding of where I should add more uh, darker parts. And I'm just gonna clean up this stitch line here. Same thing for this one, clean that up in there. It's another advantage of the iPad and Apple Pencil. Um, by the way, I don't make money from Apple. <laughs> I know these videos sound like an Apple uh, commercial, but they're not. Not meant to be anyway. I just love these tools. 
Okay, so this line here is all nice and black. It's part of a suit. It's a, uh, a patch of black that uh, is just before his forearm. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a white reflection here. So it looks like there's a lighting effect happening there. And then we're going to add, uh, move my legs. There we go. All right, so we're going to add those lines to our fingers now. We trace the contour lines, and then we're going to add the same lines we did on the right hand. And I might accelerate that because you did see it on the right hand. Uh, it's the same technique technically here, no difference. Let's add a few uh, stitch lines to his forearm bits here. And erase the foundation lines that we don't need anymore. All right. Now, keep in mind, there'll be a gun here later on, so you don't need to color that part in there, back there, right? So there'll be a gun in this area. Um, so I will draw the fingers and all that. And I may even color back there to do the chest uh, portion and all, but don't worry about it. Uh, you don't have to follow along for where the gun will be, okay? Because uh, after you'll have a hard time erasing that. I'm just warning you in advance. So this is the thickness to the upper part of his glove. And in, uh, the contours of his fingers. Think of hot dogs here for the fingers. If you want to keep it super simple, they're hot dog shapes, more or less. You know, and bend your fingers, put them in a mirror, and draw what you see. That's the simplest way. Make a fist and draw what you see in the mirror. And, uh, you know, use real things around your house to understand how to draw them. It's the best trick. It's the only way to learn. Yes, of course, you can watch me and, and so on. But if you want to learn the real method, man, what you do is you set up in front of a mirror, make faces, draw your faces. You can make them super cartoony at first, but if you keep practicing, you can make them look more and more realistic. And draw your, your fist, your thumb, your fingers. And then you'll get really good at drawing hands eventually. I'm going to color this portion in nice and black as well. And then we're going to bleed that into the, uh, see like on the other side there, it's nice and gray here. So we're going to use the same black around the contour here, like we did on the right side of the hand, or the right hand, I should say. And color this black part too. Remember to pause, catch up, hit play again. And then I'm going to color all this portion in a nice dark charcoal color too. This section up here is dark. This one as well. Oop, Apple battery low, uh, Apple pencil low. Well, I'm not gonna show you the portion where I recharge the actual Apple pencil. So what happens is when the Apple pencil battery is low, I uh, disconnect the tip, not where the pointed end is, the other end that's closest to the camera there, the rounded portion. I unplug that and then plug the tip into the iPad and within, I would say 30 seconds, yeah, it's about, I think it's 30 seconds. Um, the Apple Pencil is recharged at 80%, so it's very fast. I don't think it uses much battery to, to say. Um, so anyway, and here we are drawing again. It was super quick, it didn't take too long. I didn't show it, it's not worth, you know, waiting 30 seconds. And especially if you don't have an Apple Pencil at home, you'll be like, who cares, man? I want to know how to draw. And I totally agree with that. All right, All right so the nice curved lines to the thumb. And then shading the fingers like we did on the right side. So we'll try to keep the middle section there white. So I'll do all the left side first and then add some shading on the right side next of each finger. And then make it a lot darker here when uh, we're on the sides where the fingers are touching each other like that. Leave that little white reflection in there. Looks good, right? All right. Uh, the red suit. So this portion here and this portion here, I'll make it a light gray. Now it needs to be darker on the far left because the light doesn't hit that side. I imagine that the light is coming from the top right, right? <laughs> so yeah, from up here. So essentially the shading needs to be applied to the left side of my character. I understand that if you're left-handed, it will be a little bit more difficult to, to do. So you can make the light come from the right side if you, pro uh, if you from the left side if you rather, and that's okay. Right, left, right, left, I'm getting all mixed up here. All right, let's do the stitch lines to his suit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's 
following his uh, body parts pretty well. Coloring his thumb here to match his fingers. That. And then, as we did on the right hand, we'll make the bottom lines thicker to give that nice effect of shaded uh, thickness at the bottom of his fingers. So this portion here I'm coloring in now. That's because I have the ease of erasing with my ap Apple Pencil. Don't color next to the hand there if you don't want to because we're going to draw the gun there later on and you'll have a hard time erasing that. Let's add the shading that his head is producing on his body. All the way up to the belt here. And a little bit more on this end here, make that darker too. So as I move in and out, I'm actually looking at the drawing overall and saying, yeah, maybe I need more shading here, and maybe I need more shading here. In this section, once again, you don't have to go draw that. I just feel like doing it. But we need to put the gun there. The gun will be there later on. Retrace the jawline, make it nice and dark. Retrace the eye lines, make those darker. We can put in there the, the tear duct. Just like this, whoop, see, little tear duct. Whoop, like that. Looks cool, now shade this portion of the eye, make it a little bit darker. I mean, no, no real mask can actually do that. And you know that in the Deadpool movie, which is rated R, by the way, if you're below 18 or 16, don't go watch that movie. But in the movie, the eyes are 3D. They're made by computer-generated uh, images. So having those white, spooky eyes, you can't really do that in real life other than having white lenses, but they wouldn't move, right? In the movie, he's very animated. His eyes go up and down, or his eyebrows do, and you can see his mask very animated, and his eye slits move and change thickness and all that. But that's not... It's not real, uh, realistic, it's not possible in real life. All done with computers. Okay, so coloring this portion in, as I said earlier, the left side needs to be darker because the light is coming from the top right. And now start, let's start working on the right arm here and giving that as much detail as we put on the left one. I would say there's about 20 minutes left of this video to learn how to draw. Deadpool. If you've made it so far, congratulations. Thank you for sticking around for this long video. Um, but I hope you're enjoying it, and I hope your Deadpool is coming along swimmingly well. And I hope you're getting the hang of these drawings. I really believe anyone can learn to draw. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody gets really good at it, that goes with passion and want and effort and all that. Practice, patience, perseverance, right? But everybody can learn to draw, that's for sure. Let's uh, color this in nice and dark as well. And remember, remember, we'll keep the left side of that shoulder pad there darker still, right? So like we did on the left side. All right, we're going to add that dark patch here. Uh, keep curving that all the way up, and I can't forget this portion here, which I was uh, I was about to forget. Coloring this triangular shape here, curved triangle. Make this nice and dark at the bottom left, and make it lighter as we go up. So I need to re recolor that in a little bit more. Yeah, see it's not dark enough over here, so we'll add these uh, stitch lines in there. And it should curve here. There we go. A patch of some kind that he's put on his suit. Well, taken for granted that he made his suit. Not sure if this version he designed, but or, or uh, sewed together. He did do the his first versions, which were just pretty much uh, jogging pants and uh, hoodies. <laughs> eh, such a kooky guy, this Deadpool. I wouldn't screw around with him though. But very kooky. So color this in. Nice light gray. This is the portion that's that uh, should be red. 
RED red. And this portion here, add a little uh, cast shadow from the belt, which is a little bit thicker, so it should produce a little bit of a cast shadow there on the body. And then here as well, see how is it how it matches what was on the belt there before. So uh, we need to color in the thickness of the chest muscle here. Color, 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 color. And then go all the way to the left. Don't forget the underside here. Mm -mm -mm. Color that in all the way to the right. All right. And retrace the outline of his body here and make that a little bit darker. Same goes for his bicep, right bicep here, and his tricep. We trace the contour line of his uh, forearm, that black stitching or black material that defines his arm and his forearm. Leave a little bit of a white reflection like we did on the left side. Forearm retrace, and curve in right there, right by the little finger, little pinky. And then erase the contour lines that we no longer need inside here as well. You don't have to clean it up if you don't want to, eh? You can just color it on top. You heard a little bit of my Canadian accent in there, eh? You don't have to, eh? Um, so we need to uh, do the underarm here, the, for the forearm underpiece with a little elbowy portion here, elbow bone. Banging that thing hurts sometimes. Ooh, the call the funny bone is not too funny. And then his uh, cuff to his glove back here this should be nice and black. Speed this up a little bit, or else the video this video would last like three four hours. <laughs> Just kidding, but. I do speed things up a little bit. Imagine we're at an hour, an hour and six minutes um, overall. And if I hadn't speeded up some of these portions, we'd be probably an hour and 20 minutes. All right, so add some uh, volume shading here. Nice and black underneath there. Same goes here. Leading, leaving just a little bit of a white portion at the bottom. The forearm, nice and gray on the left end and then paler as we move up and away. There we go, lighter and lighter on the pencil. The bicep here should be dark at the bottom and light at the top, so color in the basic foundation color and then here put in the dark sort of curved triangle piece. And stitching to his armor. I erase that little line there. I'll undo them there. Retrace and this time not go beyond the line of the forearm. Need to make this darker yet again. There we go. It's coming along swimmingly well, whatever that means. Um, stitch line, another stitch line here. Why the hell not? Yeah, right here, right here, boom, boop, boom, like that. And then we'll color this part in here a little bit. As the curvature of the arm happens, then it should get darker as we start going underneath the body part once again. Hey, look at that. Okay, so we'll add, he's got this little thing. I think it's where the shoulder pad attaches physically to his uh, chest piece. There's like a connector there somehow. And We'll add a bit more darker here shading to his cowl. Those lines, make those lines a little bit longer. And let's see, maybe over here, make this a little bit darker as well. You know, this portion should be shaded, is really in the dark, so.
Okay, the nose need to, needs to cast a shadow. We need to make it darker on the left side than on the right side. And then we'll make the under portion of his, or the back portion of his body here. And he's got some black uh, L shapes, reverse L shape here on the side of his body. And these will be colored uh, very, very black. So let's uh, get that going underneath the hand here. Which eventually there'll be the gun handle inside there, but for the moment, let's consider his uh, suit. So this portion here should be all very dark. Skip uh, skipping over the belt line there, and we're gonna leave a little bit of white here on the on the far end. So he's got like a light reflection on there. Same thing. We'll color in the belt too, and all the way up. It has to be black, but as we move up, we can make it a little bit paler but have it stop of course at the sword you don't want to color through the sword that look weird unless it's a glass sword and we could have a glass sword if you wanted to why not it's your drawing you're the inventor of this piece you draw it as you wish you are the master when you're drawing unless you have an art teacher and you have to do what they tell you to okay all the way here and same thing on the right side here Color that in. How about a bit of fast forward here? Fast forward it. Fast forward it. Mm, yeah. Man, oh man. This drawing is looking good. Good enough to eat. All the way down, all the way up. Adding layers, layers of graphite. One on top of another, making it darker and darker as we go. Ooh. Right, erase these lines here a little bit. If you haven't uh, gone over your lines while coloring, as I did, then leave your drawing as it is. I'm cleaning up a few portions here, and I'd like to have a little bit of a white reflection on this section here. So what's great with the iPad is I can erase that and add white back in. If you have a thin eraser at home, you can do that too, but uh, you don't have to. If you haven't drawn this portion yet, well, make sure to leave a little bit of a white line there to demonstrate uh, white light reflecting off of this leathery bit to a suit. All right. Make this line a little bit thicker. Triangle. That looks not bad. Okay. Make this a bit darker still. Yeah, ah, look at that. That's coming along. Okay, so now I think we should start thinking about that gun. The gun piece is important. Like, even these lines that we're drawing here are, are useless. And I don't know why I'm doing this or why I did it. Uh, we need to put the gun in there, so don't, don't do these lines. Just ignore that portion. It makes no sense to be coloring this stuff in and wasting time. Uh, for some reason, I wanted to draw through the body or draw through the gun to have perfect proportions, but there's really no point in coloring this element here. Okay, Paolo, move along. Move up to the gun, huh? Okay. All right, so here's our uh, more or less finished Deadpool. I'm gonna clean up my iPad a little bit because it's full of uh, hand grease, hand fat, whatever you want to call it, uh, hand oils. Um, and, you know, on your piece of paper, what would happen is you're actually dragging graphite around and making your page sort of muddy with uh, graphite and you can erase that stuff or clean it up. With the iPad, you don't really smudge your drawing so much as you uh, put some uh, body oils all over the iPad and it makes for a very slippery surface. Um, and so it's good to have a microfiber cloth there and clean up your iPad with just a, a few swipes there. A bit of pressure and cleaning it up makes it for a good clean iPad and I can continue drawing. It's, uh, it doesn't really impede the drawing, having some uh, body oils on the, the iPad, but it makes it a little bit slippery, and, and some parts are slippery, some parts aren't, so it ends up being a little bit more difficult to control the pencil. I'd like to clean it up and then draw on top of it again. Add some uh, clothing fold here, just like that. Like uh, Wolverine claw marks, but essentially they're... He has a little bit of a spin in his body, so it's tugging at his clothes, putting those body clothes lines in there. 
make this uh, peck line darker and then add a cast shadow underneath here like that so at this point what it is it's really looking at the drawing and adding the stuff that we think is missing moving in moving out very important to do sometimes you can squint and as you squint you can see the it's like you're playing with the contrast of your image and by looking at squinted or looking through squinted eyes you get an idea of where you should put more dark lines and where you need to shade a bit more it comes with practice you need to do it like frequently to get an understanding but you'll understand it if you try it out okay all right it's as if we need a dark line here and darker line i'm going to do that a few times here there we go thicker darker line at the bottom of the sword samurai and we'll erase these lines that we don't need anymore clean up the drawing a little bit there we go and hey it's coming along very good so we'll add the the other sword hilt back here he has one sword that he pulled out of the left um, sheath and this one is still there so we'll make this one a little bit different we'll not do the um, diamond shapes in there we'll just draw horizontal lines through there so we'll make it nice and dark at the bottom here and on the left side and then we'll draw horizontal lines slightly curved to demonstrate the the the, the curvature of that uh, shape like this all the way down and then we're gonna shade the left side a little bit more just like this you know, give that sense of volume which makes our, our drawing looks a bit, look a bit more realistic. Of course, this is a line drawing and so on and so forth. So you can't really say that it looks hyper realistic. That's not what we're talking about. Okay, gun time. Yay. Uh, you know, I, I hate drawing guns. <laughs> I say yay, but I'm really bad at it. So we'll try to think of the shapes that this gun is made of. And technically, it's a, a few rectangles that are aimed at us. So... What we need to do is consider a, a square. When you're looking down at a square, what, what are the shapes that we have there? So I'm going to color this portion in. I'm thinking, uh, you know, consider a rectangle shape that is stretched out. So see what I said earlier not to draw here? Well, I am erasing that part. I don't need it anymore. And with the iPad, it's super simple to erase those lines, whereas at home, I know you'd be having a hard time at the moment and being very unhappy with me. So that's why I told you don't draw here. All those lines I'd made before. So, okay, this curves like this. This is where the barrel is, or the hole for where the bullet comes from. For these desert eagles, they bend in like that, then come back out. And we're trying to make a mirror image on either side of this shape here. And then a nice straight line and a circular pattern at the bottom here so just like whoop like that okay so not the easiest shape to draw uh, i'll admit it as i said i don't like drawing weapons that are i don't really pay attention to them much and uh, it gives me a hard time drawing them and then it makes me frustrated but i haven't drawn lots of weapons or i mean guns to, to be precise okay draw this line down uh, the angle isn't very good, but anyway, whatever. Circle to where the bullet hole is. And the thickness to this curvature element here. So, call this nice and black at the bottom. And as we're moving towards the exit, it should become lighter. Just like that. And then try to keep the line smooth as we go up over here and then color the entire face like this all the way to the bottom the portion of the top here should be a little bit brighter but uh, we'll fix that later on by making the under part a bit darker and of course the uh, the aiming apparatus which I forget the uh, crosshair I guess Yeah, this needs to be a bit straighter. Okay, we'll make this portion darker, as I said earlier. Just with simple cross-hatching. Recolor that. There we go. 
but for the shape of that. Finish the corner off. Okay, and now we need to put in the thickness to the bottom of the gun. Make that nice and black through and through from top to bottom. This should not be seen by the light whatsoever, so we need to make it nice and black in there. Alright, six minutes left to this drawing. Keep it up, keep it up. We're nearly there. Nearly at the end. And we'll add a few... Well, this is like the... I think it's the... Uh, automatic, semi -auto, I don't know what that button is back here on the gun. I think it's the set it up on safety. Maybe the safety button. I'm not sure. And we'll add a few more lines here like that. And color that in blacker and make the whole side of the gun a bit more interesting here. So we'll add a few more lines in this. Uh, let's put in the trigger, uh, the trigger guard here, which should go over the fingers in a few seconds. Just color that in. All right. And another little bit here. Now, how do I know how to draw this? Well, hey, man, YouTube, uh, not YouTube, sorry, Internet. Just look on the Internet. Look for Desert Eagle, uh, 45 millimeter, and then you draw what you see. And so that's that's what we're doing here. Okay. Now, there's a line here. It should be straight and with a curve. and go with the back, which will be dark later on. And then there'll be this, like, L shape, well that's straight, and then an L shape from here, and then down. Uh, boom, down like that. Now just a little bit more interesting, and there are sawtooth marks at the top, so we'll make a straight line like this, and then we'll color that in, nice and dark, uh, and erase the portions in there that we want to show the sawtooth. Now, for you guys at home, just leave it dark like that, if you're drawing on real pen and paper, uh, what I'll do is I'll erase the sawtooth lines in here, which is what uh, Deadpool's gun looks like. It's got these like sawtooth marks at the top. I'm just going to erase some of these things in here, and I'm not worried about I'm not worried about the belt. Uh, I'm just going to recolor inside that to balance out the tones that are back there. So make these lines back in here. Color this in. So from afar, you won't be able to see that that's been erased. Just like this. Yeah. All right. Then, of course, the trigger guard here. Make that nice and black. Because we're drawing on top of the finger. Notice I'm not erasing the finger. I'm just going to color it on right over it. Right on top of that thing there. That little finger. There we go. Look at that. Hey, this is coming, out. coming around. Coming around. Coming along, I should say. All right, we can color the side of the gun here now. Top to bottom, same tone, boom, just like that. And the inside portion here, darker. Make sure there's a recessed element to that. And all of this section here, make it darker as well. That looks like a fair, good-looking gun, if I do say so myself. Coloring the thumb back here, push that thumb back a little bit. By making it black, we're pushing the, the thumb pat back. And then I would think the last portion uh, left for us here should be a sword. We need to put those uh, specific uh, samurai sword details. So, ah, uh, so we need the hilt, or you know, where the blade sets into the hilt or the, the uh, handle. This sort of sometimes golden or silver piece. Put horizontal lines through here. I actually, they're vertical now. Like that. And then we can put in the sort of uh, wavy, I guess it's what they do there is the sharpening uh, that they use on the sword. You can actually see that it creates a wavy effect. I think that's what that is, is how they sharpen the sword. 
That gives those wavy lines in there. If you look at any samurai movie, you'll see, or, or uh, Kill Bill, which, by the way, if you're not 16 or 18, you should watch. No, no, no. Um, you'll be able to see those details on those samurai swords. And, uh, yeah, then a bit of shading here under the hands. And we're practically done, guys. I, you know, I really hope you enjoy this video. Uh, it's a Deadpool. I think it's successful. We've done a great job here. Um, the next step would be to color it. If you want to go ahead and color it at home, feel free. Uh, hey, Deadpool, I hope you enjoy it. I had a blast doing it. Last thing, signature. And we'll see you next time on another episode of Drawing with Paolo. Take care. Have fun. See you soon. And welcome to Drawing with Paolo. As you can see, today it's snowing, and it's snowing a lot. So after a morning of shoveling, it's a great time to go inside and get another drawing done with a hot cup of chocolate cocoa. <laughs> <laughs>